Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. AMA Expo West starts tomorrow. Department of Defense studying unauthorized Pentagon area drone flights. And California company turning manned aircraft into drones. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world with more than 195,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. The annual AMA Expo West Coast Edition gets its start at the Ontario Convention Center in Ontario, California this Friday. Packed to the rafters with exhibitors, displays, seminars, discussions, and all manner of model aviation goodness. The festivities start Friday, January 5th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. The event continues Saturday, January 6th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and resumes Sunday, January 7th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Forums will be presented on such diverse topics as the Scaled Composite Strata Launch Program from the viewpoint of an AMA Ember and Scaled Staffer, as well as NASA details on Prandtl Wing as presented by Al Bowers, the Chief Scientist at the NASA Neil A. Armstrong Flight Research Center. A NASA presentation on the UAS integration in the National Airspace System will be offered by Steffi Valkov, also of NASA Armstrong. Saturday's AMA Government Relations Panel discussion is also a must-attend event. There's plenty to do and see, and each year gets better than the year before. However, we need to note that due to new security restrictions at the Ontario Convention Center, all persons and packages are subject to search upon entry. No weapons, alcohol, illegal substances, or objects are allowed. If you can get there, do so. This is a great event. In the next drill minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. Charges filed against two journalists for illegally flying a drone over Parliament in Myanmar have been dropped by local authorities. Attorneys for La Hong Meng, a Singaporean, and Mok Choi Lin, a Malaysian, working for the Turkish state broadcaster TRT, and two local people who had been working with the journalist, will be released from detention on January 5th, after serving a two-month sentence for flying a drone illegally. DJI has introduced a knowledge quiz applicable to all pilots who are operating drones in UK airspace. The test comes prior to government plans to introduce a safety awareness test for drone users in 2018. A recent survey carried out by the Civil Aviation Authority revealed that 27% of those planning to buy a drone over the Christmas period are unaware of the rules surrounding their usage in the UK. The city of Palo Alto, California has applied to participate in the FAA's Unmanned Aircraft Systems Integration Pilot Program, hoping to get authorization for blood deliveries by drone. In a letter to the city council, Palo Alto city manager James Keene said that the city has been approached by prospective partners with two operational concepts. AMA's president, Rich Hansen, had a well-placed and timely editorial in a recent edition of The Hill, a major Washington publication. Rich's op-ed, entitled Punish Rogue Recreational Drone Pilots, Not the Rule Followers, appeared in the January 2nd edition. Many members of Congress and their staff follow the news outlet on a regular basis. That was our Drone Minute, now back to the rest of the news. Here's a bit of bad press we did not need. It seems that the Department of Defense is tracking a number of drone intrusions into the airspace surrounding the Pentagon. Over the course of a few months last year, DOD studied drone activity near a number of pivotal installations and detected some 100 drone flights that appeared to be operating in the vicinity of the Pentagon, a particularly sensitive bit of airspace after the attacks of 9-11. And of course, the Pentagon is well ensconced within DC airspace already forbidden to drone operations. The study was undertaken to determine whether UAVs could be used for spying on DOD operations or to conduct terrorist attacks. They did not provide a lot of details about the identity or type of drone activity that was occurring. 
though sources indicate that small personal drones used for aerial photo and videography were a part of the mix. The study took place after the FAA had already banned operations near or over 133 specific military installations. A company specializing in unmanned solutions has created an unmanned system based on the Sinus Pipistral LSA. This project is part of an overall plan to create a multifunctional aerial robotic complex able to carry out group missions with an integrated special payload. Recent test flights demonstrated excellent synchronization of the onboard control system with payload during simultaneous flight of three unmanned vehicles. The aerial complex includes unmanned aerial vehicle and a ground control station. With a payload weight of 441 pounds, it can fly for five hours. The maximum takeoff weight of the aircraft is 1,410 pounds. The maximum cruising speed is 75 miles per hour. The operating temperature range is negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. The flight time with a payload weight of 88 pounds is 20 hours. Takeoff, en route flight, and landing are carried out in fully automatic mode. The heavyweight unmanned aircraft are designed for long flight in conditions of high turbulence and overloads. Its reinforced fuselage and landing gear are engineered for harsh landing, including grass field aerodromes or prepared sites. The onboard control system is adjustable to almost any payload and provides remote diagnostics. The unmanned aviation complex can be used for surveillance, relay, target indication, towing, and dropping targets. Well, that's our program for this week. Airborne's AMA Drone Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. And in addition to this program, our daily Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. With additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. See you next week.